All right, so I am a big burger guy. Love burgers. And you know what my absolute favorite turkey burger of all time is? No clue, because they all suck. Turkey burgers typically just are tasteless, dry, weak comparison to just a normal burger. So I wanted to see, could I rock out a turkey burger that's delicious and moist and unbelievable in under 15 minutes? This is a turkey burger with an apple slaw. I think you guys are gonna dig this one. So, 15 minutes on the clock. My boy Howard on the camera, here we go. I started my pan, it's getting nice and hot. I'm, uh, is it getting hot? Yeah, I'm medium heat. And then I'm gonna grab some turkey and some other schmutz. I've got a bowl here. I think that's, I'll start with that, some olive oil. God, every time. The plus side to these really, really, really cool shelves is they look cool. The downside is you break a lot of stuff. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to this pan. And I'm gonna grab some spices before I even touch my turkey. I've got coriander and fennel. If you don't have coriander or fennel, you don't need much. You can add black pepper to salt. I don't think you should heavily um, spice or do much to any turkey burger or any burger. I think the meat should be really high quality and you should taste that. So nothing should really mask it, but I think a little bit of spice in this is not too shabby. So again, coriander seeds and some fennel seeds. I've got a little pestle and mortar. If you don't have this, you can just take like a, a big rolling pin and a towel and put the spices in there and go to town, baby. See that, Howard? Oh yeah. Oh God, it smells so good. It really does smell so good. Just look, look at that, it's so good. All right, so this is going into a bowl. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and I think the pepper's what fell? Nope, it's not. What fell, what is this? Vinegar, vinegar! I don't know how that didn't break. I keep dropping glass on the ground and none of it breaks. All right, so no egg, no breadcrumb. We're not making meatballs. This is a smash burger, and I'll show you why it's called a smash burger. So we've got about a pound, good old turkey, and this should, you know, this is kind of a healthy alternative to the beef, right? If you're not eating too much red meat, this is a nice thing to do. So before I touch it, you have to just think about like, well, what do you need? So I need two spatulas. This is a smash burger. So we're gonna actually use these to smash them down. And then what I'm gonna do is just get in there and massage it all up. There's no right way to do this, right? You just gotta get in there and get dirty. And the reason why smash burgers are different than other burgers is other burgers you make the patty and then lay it on the grill or you lay it in the pan. Smash burger is you make like a meatball, like you make like a round, like a golf ball, and then you smash it into the pan. And what that does is it makes like a little surface area, little craggles and cracks and just personality that the burger takes on that it doesn't get when you just lay it in there. So check this out, I'm gonna grab, this is like, I would say, what ball? I would say this is a, what is that ball that you hit indoors? Is it, not tennis, um, racquetball, racquetball, racquetball. My dad used to play racquetball at the JCC. Good times. Lots of tight white shorts. Okay, so I'm gonna throw a couple of these balls in there. Again, not making like a perfect ball, I'm gonna do three. Cool. Just kind of let them sear. Actually, let's do four. Let's do it. Cool, I'll get this away. I'm gonna wash my hands. Come on. One of the biggest things about cooking, and especially this show in particular, is how often you actually wash your hands. And everyone always asks me, like, do I really need to wash them that much? You do. Like, typically when I cook, I'll wash them like three or four times, and that's totally okay. It's better safe than sorry. All right, a little more olive oil, and then I'm literally just gonna take, actually, this is a cool trick. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of olive oil and put it on the back of the spatula, just like that. Cool. It's okay if it kind of drizzles in. And then I'm gonna take this spatula with another spatula, lay it on top, and smash it down. And it should just lift up. Do it again. 
smash down. Thus, why it's called a smash burger. Please don't use the palm of your hand. It will suck for everyone. Beautiful. And again, don't try and go for that perfect round patty. Go for the personality, the little crack that you could see, like these are gonna kind of press into the pan and get really, really crispy. All right, so burgers are doing their thing. I'm gonna let them cook for about three minutes on the first side, then maybe three minutes on the second side. I'm a big coleslaw guy. A lot of people hate it. I get it. Mine has no mayo in it. Because I think, I could be wrong, I think that's why people hate it. So, but mine does have a very surprise ingredient. By the way, I think I, oh yeah, Howard. I've got cheese. I've got, I forgot I had cheese. I was gonna use cheese, but I have cheese. Uh, cabbage and celery. Okay, so this slaw is so, so simple. Um, and really, you can do it with anything you got. I wish I had a bigger bowl. I don't have a bigger bowl. This is gonna be weird. I'm using a pot. I ran, I, all the bowls are in the dishwasher. Don't judge. Okay, so celery, I'm gonna click off like two. The bottom of the celery is always a little dirty. Back to the sink, right, that's okay. okay now I got some apples, I've got like an apple, maybe an onion. So we're just gonna do a little knife skills, really, really simple. Again, take your time, you don't need to be as fast as I am, but I'm just gonna cut the celery down the middle like this. And Howard, I know my big pot's kinda messing me up. You can save this for stock, but I just kinda slice this thin, and I'm just kinda nice and easy shaving the celery. The celery just adds a brightness. I think celery is one of those things that everyone just sees as like, Super healthy food, I'm never really gonna cook with it. But I always have celery in the fridge, always. Because it really does add a little bit of refreshingness to anything you got. All right, so that's going into my pot. By the way, we're not cooking this. I literally am just out of salad bowls. All right, then I've got some cabbage. This is Savoy cabbage, and there's a big kind of pit or um, core. So I just kind of put it on its side Save this core, you can cook it for a long period of time and it actually gets really delicious. But for today, we're just after the cabbage. So I'm just gonna shave this nice and thin. Beautiful. And again, don't have to go fast, take your time. Just the thinner, the better. Oh yeah, you getting this, Howard? Mm -hmm. Looks good, right? Are you a coleslaw guy? I do like coleslaw. See, some people don't, I, you know, and I get it. I totally get it. I will say, um, I think it was a question I had a while ago from Jenny to the Benny, I think was her name. Um, so Jenny to the Benny asked, how can you cook cabbage in a really interesting way besides just serving it in a salad? And honestly, you could sear cabbage like a steak and then baste it with butter and vinegar and it's really delicious, just kind of treated like a big piece of meat. Seems weird, but really, really good. All right, I've got an apple, and I'm just gonna grade the apple on the thickest grade that you got. This is a Granny Smith apple, the one that you would like use in apple pies and stuff. I think it's got the best acid, like it pops. It's looking good. So I'm just grading this. Save the cores, you can make applesauce, you can juice them but I like to kind of just grate them. Every single Hanukkah, we make uh, potato pancakes latkes. In one year, I mixed a little apple in with the potato. Really nice, really nice. So ever since then, I've been kind of grating my apple. It's good. All right. So, apple up, in we go. And the juice of the apple is really kind of the base to this. How are we doing on time? Holy crap. Okay, we are really behind. Spoon. Howard, check out these burgers. I mean, look at that. Those look great, right? Just give me a quick flip. Literally, the other side needs like not too much time. 
maybe about a minute or two. So it's just the amount of time you need to melt some cheese. Come on, cheese, don't be the death of me. Oh yeah, just a slice there. Dude, I'm a cheeseburger guy. I don't like a lot of stuff on my burger. Like, you know, when tomatoes are in season, fine. I don't need a lot of that shreddice, the shredded lettuce, screw that. All right, so those are kind of cooking for another couple of minutes. The slaw, uh, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt. I'm gonna add some mustard. This is kind of the base instead of mayo. Good heaping spoonful of mustard. And then, trick, pickle juice. The juice in the pickle jar. This has vinegar, sugar, has everything you want in a good old fashioned slaw and kind of sets it off. Plus, I'm gonna use the pickles for the actual burger itself. Look at this. This looks bright, delicious, healthy. You know, a burger doesn't have to be like a big heavy thing with fries and it can just be kind of this really bright light slaw. Now, I like to really work it. That's why I got a big pot like this because you kind of want to bust the cabbage and the apple and really make sure it's all kind of working together. All right, buns. You can't have burgers without good buns. I like brioche buns, right? They're like challah, but buns are made with butter and just tons of gorgeous yeast and they're just fluffy and they're good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open these up. One trick I have, because I'm gonna put mayo on the burger itself, is to actually toast the burger using mayo. This is Sir Kensington mayo, the poshest mayo you can find. But I'm just gonna put it kind of a little bit of layer on each side. And if you think about mayo, it's got a little bit of egg, it's got a little bit of oil. So it kind of has everything you need for a really crispy burger bun. It's a lot on that side, but that's okay. Beautiful. I'm just gonna grab a pan. Uh, do I have, maybe a, maybe, maybe a sheet tray. And just like this, easy peasy. And I did have a question once before that one of you guys submitted about how to toast the perfect burger. This is the way. So about 425 degrees, literally about two minutes. All right, so a question I get all the time when it comes to anything meat is when is it cooked? And when it's ground meat, there's no way to tell except to put a thermometer in there or to cut into it. So we're gonna cut into it. How are we doing on time? Two minutes, okay, we're getting down to it. So I'm just gonna grab one of these. Can we talk about that for a sec? Can we just have a little religious moment? I mean, come on, the little crispy bits of cheese. But we just cut into it and as long as there's no pink, this thing is beautiful. And there is no pink. Mmm, mmm. What? That's so good. Oh, I love that. The cheese, delicious. You taste the coriander. I love it. Oh, oh. Really hot. You know when it's hot and it goes right here? Howard, do you know what I'm talking about? It's like, I do. Uh, sadly. It's the opposite of a brain freeze. It's just like, okay, down, good. Let's try the slaw real quick. Punchy, delicious, I love it. So, I made a mess, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take a little bit of red onion, and I'm just gonna slice just a little bit. I like to have a little bit of raw onion. There's something about raw onion that says burger to me, but I like it really thinly sliced, like almost shaved. That's great, and if you don't like raw onion, obviously get rid of it or put a little bit more of that pickle juice over the top and it will almost kind of pickle it with pickle style. Okay, buns are bunning. Let's grab our slaw. Nice big pile of slaw. Again, forget the fries. This will be really delicious with the burger, on the burger. So it does, it's just a really good compliment to kind of the heaviness of the burger. One minute left, we're just waiting on those buns. We've got that, I've got my pickles. Let's check them out. Maybe 30 seconds more. If I had the broiler on, we'd be money, but I don't. Wasn't that forward thinking. So that's okay. Am I coming down to the wire? Oh God, this is where the anxiety just comes in. 
It's the Jewish anxiety. I was born with it. I could never be on like Chopped or any of those shows. It's just, you would just see a meltdown. All right. Ah, it's hot. It's good though. Okay, they could have used another minute, but you guys get the idea. So, this is going here. Let's build this thing. I want to beat the time. I'm using the knife. I don't care. That, a little bit of the slaw. A little bit of the pickles. Am I okay on time? 10 seconds. Come on, baby. Slap on the top. Am I forgetting anything? I mean, that looks really good. That looks really good. And time's up. On the dot. Welcome to Turkey Burger Heaven. I can tell you, just by smashing the burger, serving with a little bit of that provolone. Howard, can you get in there just so you can see? It is gonna be a moist, crispy, just tons of personality turkey burger, and it will be one worth remembering. And if you wanna see way more recipes, just like this, that you can rock out, I'm just so excited, that you can rock out in 15 minutes or less, head to readyforseconds.com right now. You won't regret it. It's gonna be delicious. See you there.